Hi. Sorry. Hi, how are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. What's your name? So, my name is Christopher Williams. Yes. I go by the, by the name of the Budget Wise Investor. That's your, your platform? That's my platform. Um, started it uh, about four or five years ago in okay. my head. In your <laughs> <laughs> but That's good. Officially rolled it out about two years ago. Okay. And the whole purpose of it is basically to empower and teach people how to save smart and invest wisely. Save and, smart and yeah, invest and wisely. And invest wisely. Mm -hmm. So centrally, budget-wise investors. So when you hear it, people think budget, okay. and they get scared of that word budget because not many people want to to deal with budget to deal with their budget and stuff like that. They think but it's very technical. They feel very technical and whatever. But I try to show them simple methods that okay. they can use to ultimately lead to generational wealth because you have to change your mindset okay. in order to build wealth, okay. right? And that essentially starts from doing simple things. Okay. You know, I'm from the Caribbean. Caribbean. I grew up in the Caribbean. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm from a, Africa. There you go. A country called Tanzania. And I know some we Tanzania. We met yesterday in the I dividend, think we did. A little bit, dividend yes. meetup. Correct. Okay, then. So I, um, I've learned, coming up, I wasn't taught about money. Okay. A lot of what I've learned is self-taught. But I recognize that one of the ways in which you can build generational wealth is by passing down, passing down financial education. Not you know, necessarily the money, but the financial, the financial education. education aspect of it. So okay. we grew up in the Caribbean where they enforced education, education, academic education, academic. right? But I recognize that a lot of times our family know how to make the money, but they don't know how to manage or multiply and to grow it. Yes. And to grow it. So my question is, you said you, you, you help them with budgeting and investing. Correct. I mean, saving and investing. Correct. So how does the two connect? Well, Saving the, the two connect in a simple method that is. Let's say you own a credit card. Mm -hmm. You already use it to purchase stuff. And let's say you are someone who is not very disciplined with your credit cards. Yes. So first I help teach you, teach you methods in becoming more disciplined to help to pay it off, right? You have a lot of different softwares as well as a lot of different tools out here can help you to teach you better saving methods, better budgeting methods, right? Mm -hmm. Some people like spreadsheets, some like tools, online tools that can help them to visualize. I'm a visual person, okay. so I like to see numbers. Okay. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an engineer by profession, okay. so I like to see numbers and play with numbers. There are some people who don't like numbers, yes, yes, yes. So, but you can put it in simple software and see them. You can see where you're spending money, where you're wasting money, where you could do better. For example, if you eat out a lot, yes, and yes. some people just eat out without even thinking about it. Yes. But sometimes when you see that bill in front of you and you like, wow, this is what I spent yes. Yes. in a month, it will help you to surprise. So mm. then the next step after that will be, okay, if you want to save some money, let's say you are someone who buy gas. We all yes. drive, or yes. most people drive yes. a car. You buy gas every week, every so often in your car. I put all of my purchases that are revolving on one credit card, my gas, my cell phone bills, my so forth. And at the end of the year, every six months, I specifically get points cards. Cards that give me travel points or, or some sort of mileage points. And at the end of the year, I will roll those points over into dollars, into my account. And then I will use that dollar to buy a stock. Okay. So what did I just do there? I basically, use money that's passive income because that was money I spent but I got it back in points and I use that points in dollars to buy a stock. I don't just buy any stock. I so buy a dividend where exactly stock. do you invest? In stocks only or? ETF, stocks, anything that will help generate income. So specifically I like to invest in dividend stocks. Dividend. Stocks that pays you a dividend every quarter or every month. One such stock that pays dividends every month is reality income. You get a dividend income every month from reality income. Okay. And, and you can, you just multiply the money you had in the credit card, right? Mm -hmm. Because now you're getting the monthly income by buying tax. And the more shares you purchase yes. in reality income is the more dividend income you get from so it. So for how long have you been doing uh, what you're doing? Um, again, officially I started with friends and family yes. in like, a couple of years ago, just sharing information that I learned with friends and family, but officially started doing this two years ago by okay. by trying to 
be more intentional about it. So uh, what platform did you say you use as your main platform? I've used um, a numerous platforms to help me visualize. You can use Mint. They have one called Empower that used to be called Personal Capital. But I'm good with Excel and so forth, so okay. I tend to put my own, build my own in Excel to track my own budget and build. So do you share your content on YouTube or Instagram or where specifically? I, I, I share it on um, Instagram right now. I'm not a big social person, so I don't okay. post a lot. Mm -hmm. But I, this is why I'm here at FinCon, because oh, it's to, financial to content, <laughs> to know, to better learn how yes. to get into that space. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, it's most likely, I like to work one-on-one. -on -one. I like okay. to work one-on-one. -on -one. I feel like social media space, it's, it works for some. And, but I feel like sometimes it's more about likes and clicks and so okay. forth. But I like to approach this from an authentic point of view. Mm -hmm. I like to meet people who are, who are intentional about what they want to learn, right? Mm -hmm. So, I so you can, do one-on-one -on -one coaching? I like one-on-one -on -one consultation and coaching. because And groups? As well as groups. I'll do in groups, but then after, let's say, I'll, I'll go to a church oh, okay. gathering. I'll speak there okay. and I introduce myself and my information. And then if someone wants to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis to help build that oh, out. Okay. Eventually, the long-term, short-term goal is to create a website and have my own seminar modules stuff and like that that can teach someone I was about to ask you do you have online courses because most of the people we talk to they emphasize on having a course, yes. a course. online courses is the next part I don't have that right now I I guess you could say it's in process it's okay. in in line okay. I have the material Okay. Just need to find the right avenue okay. to start putting that out. Okay, that's so good having a chat with you. So, how that's far it. has FinCon helped you? In yes, For, FinCon helped me in, in terms of being able to meet people so I can start collaborating. Yes. It's the connections you meet here. So, you right? have like 50 connections so far? Um, I wouldn't <laughs> say 50, but. Um, <laughs> Surprisingly, I'm, I consider myself an omnivore, so it's hard for me to initially walk up to someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. but as soon as I start meeting someone and we start interact, especially when we're having conversation of like mindedness, yes. you know, I tend to open up a bit, but yes. initially I'm not a person okay. who. Thank you so much. Thank you. I wish you all the best. I wish you I the hope best. I'll see you next year. You'll yes. come to Atlanta. I think I'm going in Atlanta <laughs> next year. Definitely. <laughs> Thank nice you. Nice to meet you.